I'm Sharice Nicole with EUR Web and CNicky.com. We are in Hollywood, California at the famous Grumman's Chinese Theater for Hill Harper's first annual Empower the Youth Movement. And it's the 1920s. Okay, so I'm here with the man of the night, Mr. Hill Harper. And this is a sharp dressed man. Did you get a, did you get a shot of this? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful as Elise Neal. Oh, so let's just put goodness. it that way. Oh my goodness. So tell me, why 1920s? 1920s, it's just have fun. Yeah. You know, just to do something fun. It's, there's no real purpose behind it. There's no messaging. There's no nothing. Just let's just have, let's do something different. Have fun. You know what? It's a, it's, a, it's an excuse to look fly. Exactly. That's what I Excuse think. to dress up, just have fun, yeah. and just enjoy each other. Why was it important for you to uh, focus on financial literacy? Well, a lot of the people I work with in my foundation, whether they be adults or the children, most the number one excuse they tell me as to why they can't create the life they want is because of money. Now, is money really the reason or are there, there are other issues? So if we could take the money issue off the table, meaning not talking about making people rich, just talking about making them financially literate, meaning they can build wealth. Okay, there's a difference between just being rich and actually building wealth. Right. Many of the young people I work with, their family, the number one bank that they use is a payday loan. I'm talking about 18 or 20 percent coming off the paycheck, plus, plus, the government's taking their 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 cut. So, once you start taking all those percentages out, it's no wonder you may be earning a decent living, but there's no wonder you can't transfer the wealth down to your children. Money is something no one wants to talk about, I right? Know. People will talk about infidelity, they'll talk about who they're dating, but they won't talk about what they earn. Absolutely. They don't talk about what their credit card debt is. And so I want to make money, to, you know, I want to take it off the taboo list. Right. It doesn't need to be a taboo subject. And you know what, money is one of the reasons, one of the reasons there's such a high divorce rate. I mean... Absolutely. The number one thing pe couples argue about is money. Absolutely. And are you working with your friend, President Obama, on any of these issues? Well, listen, I think that he <laughs> has enough on his plate. He's doing his thing and he's doing a great job and I'm trying to support him in whatever way I can. Why do I have a feeling that he's calling you for advice? Like, what do I need to do to balance the budget, Hill? I, I, uh, between the two of us, I am the one with the degree in government, so maybe I, I joke with hey, him. Hey, no, that's hey. it. He, he's doing a great job. Doing a great when you first made a, made your first little bit of money, what was your what was your first big purchase? Wow, um, you know what? My first purchase was a car. I bought it for three hundred twenty-five dollars. It was an old, rusted-out, green. Uh, Toyota Corolla, we called the Green Monster, had about 300,000 miles on it, it had about <laughs> one wheel, and it, it, may, it helped me get through college. And, and, and what's amazing about that car is literally, I think it was two days before graduation is when it exploded. What? So it got me right through college. Time. And that's the thing. It's like you don't need to be in the flyest car. You don't need to have this or to have that. You know, that was the car I could afford. And like my pastor says, sometimes you need to buy a Ford. And when he says a Ford, he means a Ford, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the car I could afford at the time, and that's what I bought at the time. And, and you know, we, we, you can transition to newer and newer things if you can afford it. it. You know, it was all about what's in the closet and what can I do and put a 20 spin on it. So, you know, I'm a girl who's always got a wig. <laughs> exactly. I'm a fashion girl, and I knew what, you know, I actually did a little research online and said what would work, you know, and I was like, oh, that wig would be great, and some pearls, and, you know, sell it. And, do it up. and just sell it. When you first got your little bit of money, what was your first big purchase? <laughs> great question. You know, um, I like speed. Um, I'm a fan of a Porsche. So that was one of the first purchases I got, yes, yes. Oh a Porsche Cayenne. A Cayenne actually was my first one. Oh, girl, I'm waiting on mine. <laughs> I feel like all of my experiences being in musical theater, which is what I started in, and performing, and being able to do any dance class. When I started dancing when I was six in Memphis, Tennessee, where I'm from. And I feel like what I want to do is give back by opening my own dance school. Because I think a lot of the problems that we're having with you, they don't have outlets. They don't have a place where they can just be express themselves and have a good time and figure out something else other than something negative that may be going on in their hometown. And I know that's what took me out of Memphis, showed me a different way, made me always feel good about myself and my image, even as a young girl. And that's what I want to offer. And I love what he has always been able to do with his initiatives, with his books, with, with this, with everything that he does. It's all about, you know, growing the community. And that's what I want to do, too. All right, now. Okay, I am here with my girl, Miss Keita Williams. How are you? I am so fab, Diva. Yes, you are. Let's talk about this outfit. Well, you know, this is more like 1929 slash 30 attire I'm wearing here. 
you know, I wasn't a part of the Great Depression totally in my era. I can't do the hat, the red lipstick and all that. I had to dig in my closet. I didn't have a stylist dress me today. Um, I'm, I'm calling her. Ben Wills, where are you? Well, when you look this way, you can't be depressed about anything. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. And when you have a great cause, you definitely can't be depressed. When you got your first little piece of money, <laughs> what did you purchase? When I got my first little piece of money, honestly, I think I purchased myself, and I say little piece of money. Okay. Um, that would be the T.O. show. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> no, when I got my little first little piece of money, I actually took it and invested it. Um, I think a lot of it is I have this fear of being broke, um, and I know that's bad, but it is one of those things where I grew up in Kentucky. My parents didn't have a lot. My father didn't graduate from high school, but he provided us with the best that he could. My mother um, was a teenage mom, so we only knew what we knew, and it was as much as your parents know allows you to grow in that same element. So my fear was always not having because we were living check to check, you know, and sometimes you was living check in between each other check. So, for me, I had to understand how can I make the money grow? What are those other things we can do? And as black people, we don't understand what financial components are out there other than just a savings account. Um, and I think it was important for me to educate myself. When I did get a part, of, become a part of the TO show, Monique and I created that platform for our client. But what we didn't realize is that we learned so much more for ourselves in the financial area. I didn't understand what investment was. I didn't understand what having your own company meant. I didn't understand what it was like to have write-offs. What does that mean? Um, and when you have credit, what is your FICA score? What are those things? What, is it, what does it mean? So it's important for us to teach our own what that means because my parents didn't know it so how could they teach me right. thankfully to the TL, TL show was we saw we saw how an athlete can make all of this money and then lose the money by not knowing how to you know balance his finances so do you think that uh, TO has learned that lesson um, I think so I think the one thing athletes got to realize is get rid of the bling and learn some things okay. Um, and part of the things that they need to learn is, is investments. They need to understand what assets are. Buying a gold chain or buying your diamond watch is not an investment. Um, it's buying a house. It's, it's investing your money in stocks. Understanding what those things are. And it's sad because a lot of them have other people take care of their money for them. Um, they give them an allowance. They don't keep track. So if you have one financial manager and he's overseeing everything, who's watching him? Do you understand? That's why Oprah signs her own checks. Yes. So when you really understand what your money is, then you need to understand how to manage your money. A lot of athletes fall prey to that. A lot of athletes, three to five years after they're done playing, go bankrupt. And how is that possible when you've had millions of dollars? A lot of people can live off of millions of dollars their entire life. Some of us won't make $10 million. Ever. Right. Ever. Right. But you have athletes that's lost $20 million. I'm still dealing with some of my own right now. Um, I think there is a part of myself, if you really want to be vulnerable, is, is not feeling like you're enough. Um, I think when you work in the world of entertainment, you're constantly being compared to the next best thing. So part of my insecurity is understanding that I am enough, that my worth is just as valuable as the next. And if I believe that, then it will shine through. Uh, but growing up as a small child, I didn't believe I was pretty. I didn't believe that I had the best. And a lot of those things are superficial. So it's important to understand what that value is from the core on the inside. So now that I have it, it feels good. Shout out to my boobie. Love her. Nice. What is this that you're wearing? Oh, I don't know. This is JC Penney's. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first big purchase when you made your little bit of money? I bought a uh, BMW X5. Yeah, nice. It shouldn't be your first car, though, you know, when you've only been driving for two weeks. You know what I mean? What? I got a license, then I got an X5. You're joking. When I was young, I probably say the thing I dealt with the most is uh, just accepting myself and not trying to prove myself, you know, all of the time, you know what I'm saying? Where I, I wanted to fit in and one of the main things that I learned, you know, is, is identity and it just be myself, you know. Let me see your little, your, your 1920s outfit. I don't even know it's 1920s. I bought this a hot minute ago. <laughs> so I bought it for twenties dollars. You don't have to buy, you don't have to buy a gold plated, plated toothbrush okay. when you eventually find money. Buy you an Oral-B, buy you something that's, you know, nice, 
that can brush them and then put some money in the bank. Because, you know, a lot of brothers nowadays are trying to have that um, Zamunda Prince Hakeem uh, go toothbrush money. Let me tell you what. You know, brothers, when you out there, go ahead and make some money, put some of it in the bank. Mm -hmm. and could, Because what's attractive to the lovely ladies out there is some stability. Yes, a honey. brother that can, you know, provide for not just more than the next month or two, but for the next year or two. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my bills? You know, and I know there's so many independent women out there. So if you couple the money you can make with the money an independent woman is making, you going to be all right for years to come. Preach. Well, this is the 19 year and it's inspired, right? Like I got a little note. This is uh, Byron Lars Beauty Mark out of New York, one of my wonderful favorite designers. And he's always so generous to give me a little something to wear to the party. Yeah. So what was your first big splurge? Um, I'm still waiting. Right. Yeah, I think it'll probably be like diamonds or a billboard because it's passive income. So you get a billboard, not to put yourself on like, like that, but to, to own and rent it out to NBC or any or and you rent it out. Those, those goes for like 25 grand a month and it's passive income. You're a joke. I have I never heard of that. I kid you not. I kid you not. What? And you can put it on your building. So you can buy a building, put a billboard up there and rent out the space. Yeah. Girl, you better work with that financial literacy, okay? <laughs> what advice do you have for women that may be dating a broke brother? Oh, you don't want to do that. Because, you know, ain't nothing going on but, but the, the rent. rent. You got to have a J-O-B. You know, I mean, listen. Someone who's on their trajectory, living their dream, and trying to, like, create the abundance, you know, you can certainly align with that. But, uh... But you want to have someone who's got who's equally yoked and on the same ambition page that you are. So you I'm Sharice Nicole with EUR Web and SeeNikki.com, always taking you inside what's good in Hollywood.